And welcome back to On TV. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're talking caterpillars. In case you need to know everything that you want to know about caterpillars, we're going to help you out. From the Natural Resources Canada Great Lakes Forestry Centre right here in Sault Ste. Marie, Dr. Amanda Rowan, Dr. Chris McQuarrie, and they brought props. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they did. So tell us what kind of caterpillars we are seeing right now in Sault Ste. Marie, aside from a million. <laughs> uh, so what people are seeing on their either their maple trees or their aspen trees and actually oak right now too are what we call the forest tent caterpillar um, they're a blue and black furry caterpillar that you might see in large numbers mm -hmm. uh, either on the trunks of the trees or up uh, in the top of the leaves and sometimes they're hanging down by yeah, the... Yeah. So Those are the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're cute, but don't get on me. Yeah, the running into the webs mm -hmm. in your face doesn't ever feel good. And no. they, that's actually one of their... Um, that's one of their ways of escaping predators. So if a bird lands on the branch to try and eat at them, they do the Spider-Man. They'll jump off really? and like yeah. bungee cord Mission down. Impossible. Mission Impossible. And then they'll, then they'll climb back up their little oh. safety line back into the tree. Wow, Mother Nature... Awesome. <laughs> doc, doc, yeah. Dr. Chris, tell us about what kind of moths these guys in particular are going to turn into, because these are forest They're caterpillars? For, forest tent caterpillar. And so in a couple weeks, they will make a cocoon on the tree, and they'll turn into, a couple of weeks after that, they'll, they'll come out as a moth. And it's a kind of a, it's a little sort of brown moth, not much bigger than the caterpillar I have here. Uh -huh. and we'll see, you'd see them at night especially if you leave the porch light on. Okay. The porch light and, and... Oh, yeah, yeah. They all kind of congregate. Yep. Yeah. And, yep. They like to come to the light, and, and, and they're not... Um, they're not terribly obvious during the day because they're mm -hmm. hiding, but they're, that's the stage where they will start laying eggs for next year. So those moths will come out, they'll, they'll mate at night, and then they'll go off and lay eggs, and those eggs will hang out for the rest of the summer, and those are the ah. ones that will be the caterpillars for next year. So the moths are the part. This is the one that, that sort of everybody sees and freaks out about. Mm -hmm. If you're into moths, you notice them, but yeah. this, it's that part of the life cycle that not many people see. So. Mm -hmm. Amanda, tell us about, it feels like there's like a ton of them this year. What's the cycle of this so, caterpillar? Yeah, so this is a native insect, so it's always in the forest. But what's interesting is that the population numbers will uh, change over the years. So normally they're always in the forest, but they're really low numbers. Oh. So they're always around, but they're really hard to find. Every sort of 10 to 12 years, we see a spike in the numbers. So the population, what we, we use the term outbreak. So the population numbers go from very low to very high. And especially in Ontario, that forms a very regular cycle. Sort of mm. every 10 to 12 years, we see these numbers go from very low to very high. Why is the cycle there? Why aren't they consistent? Um, Chris, do you want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those questions that we don't have a good answer to. We know, uh. we know why they stop. They, they, um, they, get, they get diseases and they get attacked by other insects uh. that, that cause the populations to crash. Um, what triggers them to go up is is one of those questions that we study mm -hmm. as, as scientists. So it's it's interesting to be able to try and predict that because there are other insects that do the same thing. Like right. there, there, there's budworms and, and, mm -hmm. and caterpillars that do that. And so mm -hmm. trying to predict that is one of the some of the research that, that we do. What do these guys eat? Because you see them obviously in trees. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. what they're eating? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, one of uh, they uh, depending on where you are in the province, they will eat uh, sugar maple. They actually can't eat red maple. So if you have a red maple tree in your backyard, they won't be able to eat it. Um, they really like trembling aspen uh, and oak. But when the populations get really high and they're looking for food, they'll eat anything. So any oh. shrubs, um, they'll, I've heard stories about them actually eating green paint off of people's houses. What? When it's really, when it's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. really? But it is unusual, when, it is very unusual to get the population numbers that mm -hmm. high. You do see it on the news where you see people's houses completely covered right. in yeah. caterpillars. That's still um, not uh, not very common. Right, right. Yeah. So, and you, before we went to air, you guys were talking to me about how social they are because mm -hmm. they hatch and they hang out with their brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, and you brought a prop that I'm not even going to wear it. <laughs> So, like so, that thing, seriously. Yeah, so um, like, like Chris was talking about, they... The, Can you the, hold it up just... Yeah. 
So the awesome. A, the adults lay their eggs up in the tips of the trees, and when they hatch, they'll they'll stay together as a family group. So everyone in the same group of eggs will be brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and they sleep together. They actually make a little bed. They'll sleep on the little bed at night, and then they'll go out at uh, in the morning, once they've warmed up, and uh, there will be a leader, and they'll lead them to some food, they'll eat, and then they'll come back and sleep together. So, so that's why you see them in sort of puddles of them. Exactly. Sort of. exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and that is, um, there, there's ideas about why they do that. One of them is that it's, it's a defense uh, against predation. So if there's a big group of things, they're You're scary less, or looking. Either they're they're hard, they're difficult to recognize as a caterpillar because oh. they look like a big mass. But they also, if if a bird's going to come and pick up one of you, the then chances of a, uh, the chances of it being you as opposed to your neighbor becomes right. lower. Yeah, so they hang out really they, close. They together. also, and I don't know if these ones will do it. Um, they when you disturb them. They'll wave back and forth like a windshield wiper. Yeah. Really? They'll, yeah. They'll just flick the tail, flick the, the butt end. <laughs> no. You send them flying, they're not going to have Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So, and, so, yeah, but one of the things that's really fun is it's a great opportunity to get out with your kids and introduce them yes. to so they don't a end bit up of like me and kind of all weirded <laughs> out by them. Well, it's a it's a it's a part of nature sure. and you can watch them go through the that life cycle going right. from a caterpillar to a pupa to mm -hmm. uh, to a moth. And I think it's really important to instill that sort of appreciation yes. of biology of nature mm -hmm. in in kids and it's a it's a short-term pet all the all the foods outside you just throw some leaves in right. the container yep. and they can watch it so